On this super review, let's take a look at the Wizard AHE03 Kylin. I'm not quite sure what a Kylin is, but I definitely don't know what an AHE03 is. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the name Kylin. This is the Wizard Kylin, and this is the first in-ear monitor, the first headphone from Wizard that I've heard. And I'm kind of interested to check this thing out. So the Kylin is, from what I can tell on the website, it's a three driver headphone. It's got one dynamic driver and two balanced armatures. And worth pointing out that dynamic driver, according to the website, is a beryllium driver, which is generally known for making a really nice fast bass. And then one of the dynamic drivers in here is a Knowles driver, which you can actually see labeled right there. Now, in my previous experience with Knowles drivers in the Fio FH1, it was okay. It was a little bit lacking in treble in my opinion, but then we, when you listen to the Eco OH1, which also has a Knowles driver, Knowles balanced armature driver, um, I really like the, the Eco OH1. That said, the treble is a little bit, it's a little bit on the tame side, and, and I do like me some aggressive treble. I don't know what the wizard's gonna sound like, but we're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and open up the box. We'll find out what you get inside the box of the Wizard Kylan, and then I'll give it a listening test, run it against my reference library of music, and let you know, what do I think? All right, we got the Wizard Kylan sitting here in a box, and first things first, I'm gonna take off this wrapping. Ah, it's a nicer look, isn't it? All right, let's do a quick tour of the box. Um, to see if we have any tips on what we're gonna get inside. Oh, look at that, tip on tips. That was not intentional. We got a little bit of information about the accessories. And this is a big spoiler. This thing comes with a really handsome looking case. I don't know what this case is actually gonna feel like in person, but I've seen, I've seen the packaging, uh, or the, the pictures of the packaging online, and it looks really nice. Comes with a plethora of tips, um, and it's compatible with both Android and iPhone and Blackberry. Assuming, of course, your Android, iPhone, or BlackBerry device has a headphone port. No information here on this side. Uh, what do we got? Oof, that's dense. I'm not gonna dig into that. But down here in the back, we got a little bit more information about the breakdown or the, the, the makeup of this device. Like I mentioned, it's a three driver headphone. It's got one dynamic and it's got two balanced armature drivers. And you can see those balanced armature drivers here. They appear to be connected to each other. So it's not two totally distinct units, but um, that does typically qualify, I guess, as a dual. Um, and then here's the breakdown of the dynamic driver, which it says it's strength magnetic circuit layered composite driver. It doesn't actually say anything about beryllium here the way it did on the Linsol website. So. Um, there's also a lot of text here that frankly I can't read, so it, it, there might actually be a little bit more to it. Alloy frame PEK composite diaphragm. The metal coating and polymer base of the composite diaphragm can display. Yeah, there's more information here about that dynamic driver, and again, the word beryllium is not showing up, so that might actually be inaccurate. Um, there might not be any beryllium driver here. Yeah, look, there's not a ton more we're gonna find out, so let's go ahead and crack it open. We'll find out what we get inside the box of the wizard. A H E O three. All right, we got the Wizard Kylan completely unboxed. And what do you get? First of all, just want to point out really quickly, this is how you do paperwork right. See all that paperwork? There's no paperwork. 
don't have to reach. That's what I like to see. All right, so no paperwork, um, but you do get this nice little carrying case. And frankly, this feels pretty plush and it might be too plush for me to use. Like, I don't know if I'd carry this thing around, but well, that's a pretty nice case. Uh, worth calling out is, you know, this thing almost, it, it looks like it's made out of leather. I'm pretty sure it's not actually made out of leather. Smelling it on the inside kind of reminds me of the smell of like a shoe, a new shoe. Not an old shoe, not a used shoe, so that's going for it, but definitely does not smell like genuine leather. You do get a couple different styles of ear tips in various sizes. So you get uh, two pairs of foam tips, and these appear to be two different sizes of foam tips, and then you've got three different sizes of pretty standard silicone tips. And these tips feel pretty nice. These tips feel like, frankly, they might be the exact same tips that came with the Eco OH-1. And then the cable this thing comes with is pretty, it's a pretty nice cable. It's not the nicest cable. And f most of that, you know, if I had any complaints with it in, in, out of the box, is it's holding its shape a little bit, you can see. Um, which is a pretty minor complaint, especially in the budget headphone space, but this thing is 160 bucks, so not exactly budget. My standards are gonna be a little bit higher for this. That said, I think this is a really handsome cable for sure, um, and I do think that this is gonna handle quite well once it loosens up. Up here, you do have a chin cinch, which seems to stay in place pretty well. I think that's actually gonna be really effective. That said, I generally don't use chin cinches for headphones that have uh, these pre-curved hooks built into them, and these, this cable does have pre-curved hooks. Um, fortunately, they're not wires, so they don't have like a, a memory that can be unbent. They're just, they're stuck in this shape, and frankly, I'm happy with that. Now the cable that this thing comes with is a two-pin cable. It's a 0.78 millimeter, uh, pretty standard two-pin cable, um, but it does actually have a really nice fitting versus something like the, you know, cheaper KZ headphones. This thing is matched so that the, the cable couples with the headphone really well, and it's just a really nice seamless look. And then the buds themselves are, as promised, nice and metal. Got that magnesium alloy. I think these are super, super, super handsome. Uh, this is one of the best looking headphones I've ever had. The Eco OH one's also really handsome, but these have got, I don't know, these have got sort of a, a grown upness about them. I don't know, maybe these are too fancy for me, frankly, but these are pretty nice looking. This Wizard logo that they've got on the side of it, it's got this uh, this gold finish to it, and it is three dimensional. I don't know if you can tell here, but it is poking out the top of this headphone. It does give it kind of a sharp, unfinished edge to it, but I don't know, I think these are these are pretty nice. And then the stems appear to be surrounded in potentially brass. There is a mesh on the end of the headphone. But yeah, that is about as much as I can tell you about the Wizard Kylan without giving it a real listening test. So I'm gonna bring my Walkman, hook this things up, run it against my reference library of music, some De La Soul, some Metallica maybe. Uh, I've been into Erasure lately, and, and I, think I'm, I think I might be getting back into Alice in Chains. So, I'll give it a listening test and I'll come back and I'll let you know what do I think about the Wizard Kylan. Is this a, a worth 160 bucks? It certainly looks like it. We'll find out. Does it sound like it? All right, let's talk about the Wizard Kylan, which is a headphone I wanted to love. And I'll be honest, at this point, I really like the Wizard Kylan, but I don't think I love it. Let's start talking about the build quality and the physical aspects of this headphone, which frankly are the reasons why I want to love this headphone. Just look at it, look at it. It's a gorgeous headphone. I feel like in a lot of ways, the Wizard Kylan feels like jewelry. These feel like jewelry that I wanna wear. You know, everything from just the subtle blue color with the gold accents on the buds down to the cable with its own gold accents. The cable's got this wound silver and copper coloring to it. It's gorgeous. Look, everything about this headphone looks fantastic. 
And then the buds, they don't just look fantastic. They also feel fantastic in the ear. I think these are really comfortable to wear. They are a little bit smaller than they might look here in video. Um, maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll put them up against some of the other in-ears in this price range so you can see just how small the Wizard Kylan is. But it's very small, it fits very well in the ear. Um, it's very comfortable. I would say one thing that's worth pointing out is that the stems fit a little bit shallow compared to some other in-ears like this. Uh, and that just means, well, I'd say the shallower fit means that they actually are a little bit more comfortable than some other in-ears like this, but it might also mean that they're a little bit less secure. And that only really came into play for me when I was wearing these to bed. And I did wear them to bed, totally did. Um, but when I was wearing them in bed and rolling around in bed a little bit, they came undone a little bit more easily than something like the Eco or especially the BG VP DMGs. And then I mentioned the cable is gorgeous, but I also think, frankly, it's just a pretty nice cable. It's not quite as plush as the cable that you get with the, the DMGs, but it's a good cable. And frankly, like I've listened to, I've, I've, I've used some headphones that are a lot more expensive than this that come with much worse cables. So, you know, it's not the plushest cable, but it is perhaps the most gorgeous cable. And I'll give it that. For me, in, in my book, this cable is a win. And then we get to the sound quality, which is where me and the Wizard, we don't totally part ways, but this is where I'm not in love with the headphone. Again, I do quite like it, but I'm not in love with it. Generally, I would say that the sound signature on this is a warm laid back listen, which is to say that there's quite a bit of bass, quite a bit of, of upper bass, and it bleeds a little bit into the lower mids, and it makes it just like a really relaxing, soft listen. Um, there is actually a pretty decent amount of energy in the treble, but surprisingly no sibilance and no harshness in the treble. I'd say the treble's not quite as smooth as something like the Eco OH-1, but it's pretty good. It's definitely, again, it's a relaxing sounding headphone, not necessarily the most engaging listen. Um, and, and that, hmm, I would say that, that that relaxed sound to it it does take away a little bit from the soundstage. I think the soundstage on these is, it's there's some decent soundstage there, but again, compared to the Eco OH-1s and the BG VP DMGs, and I'm comparing those because they're in a similar price range, compared to those headphones, the soundstage on this is lacking a little bit. There is something going on with this headphone that I can't quite put my finger on, but when I was listening to De La Soul's Mosaic Thump album, which is an album I listen to a lot with a lot of different headphones, I'm pretty familiar with it, while listening to that, like some of the songs, actually a lot of the songs honestly felt like they were re-recordings of the same songs. Like I was picking out details that I hadn't really noticed before, but also they just kind of sounded slightly different than I'm used to. And, and look, I'm used to listening to a bunch of different headphones, so it's not just that the frequency response is a little bit different. There was something else going on there. I'm not sure exactly what it is, and I'm not sure exactly that I don't like it necessarily. Um, but that is worth calling out. And then I mentioned I was going to listen to Alice in Chains on these, and it's a good thing I did, um, because going back and forth with these and the Ecos on Alice in Chains actually was really good example of um, the lack of air and the lack of space that you know the Wizard Kylan has. With Alice in Chains, they feel a little bit congested, frankly. Uh, going back to the Eco OH-1, I think it just feels like a lot more lively music. The upper mids, and the lower treble. There's just a lot more energy, I think, in the Eco OH-1s versus this. And that comes across as it's just kind of a more congested sound. That said, I was able to EQ these with very small, very minor changes to bring down that mid bass, bring down that bass, and then a little, bu a little bit of a bump in the upper mid range. And frankly, these started to sound actually really, really good. So if I were to rate the Wizard a H E O. I'm just going to call it the Kylan. If I were to rate the Wizard Kylan, I'd give it a solid four stars out of five. Look, I think this is a very special feeling headphone just from the, the visual to the fit and the handling. This is a special feeling headphone and I feel like this would make a great gift for somebody that you think might be interested in audio. And it might be a great gift for yourself if a warm laid back listen is what you're into. Personally, it's not my favorite sound signature. I like a little bit more energy, um, a little bit more hmm, aggressive vocals, I guess. Um, and, and that's where this lets it down a little bit for me. Um, but I do think this is generally a pretty good sounding headphone. Look, at this price, this thing's 160 bucks. 
I think there are better sounding headphones. I think the Eco OH-1 is clearly a better sounding headphone than this. And then I think even the BG VP DMG sounds better than this, a little bit more, a little bit more engaging generally. Um, but I don't think that at this price, there's necessarily a better looking headphone. Damn, this thing looks good. If you're interested in checking out the Wizard Kylan, I do have links in the description down below. While you're down there, you can hit the like button for the video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you in the next super review.